What's going on, everybody? Pastor Dustin here with Pastor John for the Western Heights Baptist Church Pastors Podcast. This week we are diving into the next section of the Baptist faith and message. We're going to be talking about the Christian and the social order. So let's jump right in. I'm going to read to you um, the paragraph, and then we're going to dive right in. We have a lot of things we want to address in terms of clarif- clarifying remarks when it comes to uh, this section, and so hopefully you guys will enjoy us as we walk through it. All Christians are under obligation to seek to make the will of Christ supreme in our own lives and in human society. Means and methods used for the improvement of society and the establishment of righteousness among men can be truly and permanently helpful only when they are rooted in the regeneration of the individual by the saving grace of God in Jesus Christ. In the spirit of Christ, Christians should oppose racism, every form of greed, selfishness, and vice, and all forms of sexual immorality, including adultery, homosexuality, and pornography. We should work to provide for the orphan, the needy, the abused, the aged, the helpless, and the sick. We should speak on behalf of the unborn and contend for the sanctity of all human life, from contraception to natural death. Every Christian should seek to bring industry, government, and society as a whole under the sway of the principles of righteousness, truth, and brotherly love. In order to promote these ends, Christians should be ready to work with all men of goodwill in any good cause, always being careful to act in spirit of love without compromising their loyalty to Christ and his truth. So John, the the first sentence here um, talks about Christians being under an obligation to seek to make the will of Christ supreme in human society. Talk about how you feel Christians should seek to do that and what you feel like are the priorities a Christian should have in doing so. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in that particular statement. I mean, it says that we are under obligations to seek to make the will of Christ supreme in human society. Um, In case you have not heard this before, I'm going to break it to you that Christ is going to do that one day. He's going to make his will absolutely supreme. Uh, There is a coming day in which he is going to return, and uh, those that stand in opposition to him, uh, he's going to take care of them. He's going to reign and rule for eternity, and we're going to be with him as believers. That's when that's going to take place. What we're talking about here in this, in the here and now, we're not talking about working to usher in that kingdom. That's something that Christ is going to do. Brothers and sisters, what we're talking about here today is, is the recognition that it's our job to share the gospel, and it's our job to live according to Christian principles, and it's our job to, to find opportunities to, to influence this world, to be salt and light in the world that we're living in, to make a difference uh, as things are going. So, so what does that mean? It means we need uh, Christian uh, professors in college. We need Christian uh, um, politicians. We need uh, Christians that are involved in the sciences. We need Christians that are writing, and we need Christians that are involved in all types of areas. And everywhere where we find ourselves having influence, we should be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. People should not have to wonder whether or not we're a Christian, whether or not we stand for the principles that God uh, stands for. They should know that we believe, man, there is one creator that, man, he has a perfect plan for our lives and that, man, we're seeking holiness in the way that we live our lives and in the way that we uh, participate in the society that we have that Christ is first above all things. Yeah, there there has to be this understanding with the, the Christian that there is no other way to make the will of Christ supreme in human society other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, other than holding to our Christian integrity, sharing the gospel in a clear way, and being for the world a salt and a light of the gospel. So um, we, you know we we have to stay away from this idea that, you know, the ends justify the means. So, you know, in, in the history of the church, unfortunately, we can see places where the church did sinful things in order to justify what they thought was a positive end, right? To say, oh, well, I'm going to do this thing that is sinful, but it's so that we can get to a place where the government is all Christian, or we can get to a place where these people have been Christianized, or, or whatever that event was. We cannot ever let The ends justify the means when we talk about this idea of bringing Christ to the world. Um, The best way to bring Christ to the world is to bring them the gospel and to let people be changed by the message, be changed by the cross, be changed by being regenerated. Absolutely. So, Dustin, let's talk a little bit about our work in actively opposing racism, greed, selfishness, vice, and sexual immorality in the culture. 
Right. So one of the things that we have to do as believers is be able to speak up about what sin is. And we do that in love, but we can't preach the gospel if we aren't also preaching uh, what sin is and that mankind is is marred by sin and that we as a culture uh, live in a place that is accepting of sin. You know, when we look throughout the history of the world, um, we're not in any new place. We are, we, we are not some um, new thing where culture is just accepting sin and Man, throughout the history of the world, cultures have accepted sin. The Jews allowed sin to creep in. The 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 you know if you look back into the first and second century, if you look at the Hellenistic cultures, I mean they they had entire cultures built around um, you know marrying off children on homosexuality on 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 just the sexual sins that we would even gasp at today were normal in those cultures. And so you know one of the things we have to understand is that we stand up. We speak out against sexual sin. We speak out against greed and selfishness and vice and racism because those things are antithetical to the gospel. And so we don't just shut our mouths and and, and sit back and live in our caves and pretend like everything's okay. We stand up for the truth, and we do that by preaching the gospel, and we do that by saying, hey, these things are sin, and we don't accept them, but, man, there's forgiveness in Christ. Yeah, I was talking to a guy this week, and uh, he was just a fellow. First time I'd ever met him, we were talking about some things that we had in common. And uh, his background was a military background, and uh, you know, he was talking about a situation where uh, they were going and they were trying to go into a situation and protect some nuns. And, and these particular nuns, um, they were not willing to let this military group go in and attack the people uh, that were actually attacking them. And he was so confused. He said, these 70, 80, 90 year old nuns refused to let us go in and protect them because they knew that that is going to cost those other individuals their lives. And he said, so we had to tell them because we were talking about Christianity. He said, we had to tell them a lie. And we told them that uh, we would, we were going to be okay, that we were going to just talk to them or whatever. They got them on the helicopter. Then they went in and they killed everybody, but he couldn't understand how this this Christian group would protect people that are hurting them. Brothers and sisters, we have to recognize that it's not just about protecting people that are agreeing with us or people that are doing the right things. Justice is justice. And we need to make sure that when we stand for justice that we just don't overlook people that disagree with us and allow them to be mistreated as well. Uh, whether they are of a different creed, a different religion, or whatever else it is, I think those nuns standing between the one military group and another military group, uh, one that was there to protect them and one that was there obviously to hurt them, it is an exemplary of how we should be. We should always be looking to do what is right in God's eyes regardless of the cost to ourselves. Right, a hundred, a hundred percent, and we have to recognize too that um, you know we aren't supposed to just stand up against the evils of the world. That we also should be um, standing up in favor of those who are are the least of these. This is what the Bible talks about as uh, really the most important part of the active faith of the believer is to is to minister to and stand up for the least of these. You know, I think that in America especially, Christians have gotten a rap that, man, everybody knows what Christians are against, right? Christians are against gay marriage. Christians are against abortion. Christians are against this, this, and this, and we should speak out against sin, but we also have to be actively loving and showing that we care uh, about the people who are the least of these, so that Christianity is not just, in the social world, the things that we disagree with, but it is, man, how we actively impact the social world and those people who are the least of these. So, John, we move forward. The next section here is specifically on the sanctity of human life. Um, can you explain why it's important that the sanctity of human life is a huge issue for the church and for the individual believer? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about the sanctity of human life, people always go back to the unborn. And let me tell you, if we're talking about the least of these, that absolutely includes the unborn. And so when we're thinking about uh, this particular topic and we're talking about the sanctity of life. We always say, well, the sanctity of life includes that we are against abortion. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, let me, let me go ahead and clarify, I'm against abortion, but that's not the only sanctity of life uh, situation that, that we should be dealing with. We should be pro-life. 
but that means pro-life for the elderly. That means pro-life uh, for those that are starving. That means pro-life uh, for people that are in different uh, situations. A lot of times we go, well, you know, I'm not worried about what happens in this country over here uh, because, you know, that's not my problem that they're starving. That's their government's problem or that's it's not my problem. They're being killed by a military group in that particular country. It's not my problem. Listen to me. If we believe in the sanctity of life, it should matter to us. And if it doesn't matter to us, then what kind of people are we? How can we go around saying that that we believe, man, that God loves everyone and that that baby in the womb, man, that baby in the womb is important and God knew them before they were ever born and that God has a plan for them. And then turn around and say to another brother or sister that we, we don't know, that's not directly affected by us, well, your life doesn't matter. Every life has to matter. And let me tell you, the time is coming where Christians are going to be squeezed and, and the older generation is going to become less and less important and less and less valuable, just like the younger generation or the generation that's there in the womb has be, been determined to be uh, less than human right? Um, then now we're going to see the older generation that's going to suffer as a result of that. We're going to see reduced health care. We're going to see euthanasia. We're going to see all kinds of things that are going to challenge our thoughts about the sanctity of life. And brothers and sisters, we need to get our heads and our minds wrapped around the idea that, listen, every life matters. And when Christ tells us we should love our neighbor as ourself, that means we should be willing to give our life for others. 100%. And I think, you know, it's frustrating as believers sometimes to hear from people who disagree with us, oh, well, you're being hypocritical in this area. And I think that oftentimes those people are off. They're, they're, they're creating a straw man and trying to make us sound more hypocritical than we are. But I, mean, I think uh, when we look at how, how much we champion and we push for the, the sanctity of life when it comes to abortion, I mean, we're doing everything we should be doing there. Um, but then from the outside looking in to see that, but then see such a lack of care for orphans and for widows and for the sojourner, uh, man, it, it allows and it gives it, it gives ammunition to the people who want to say, oh, you're, 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 you don't really believe what you say you believe because of X, Y, and Z. I tell you, some of the best examples of people living out the Christian life in the social order are those people who are pro-life from womb to tomb is the, is the phrase, um, and they do so by, you know, adoption or supporting adoption or supporting um, people who are in need that that aren't in the womb they've, they've been born but they're they still matter and they still are in need and so as believers you know uh, we should be ready willing and equipped to to take care of all people because we really believe that the sanctity of human life exists uh, from the womb to the tomb so you know, it says in this statement, it says that we are to do our best to bring industry, government, and society under the sway of the principles of righteousness, truth, and brotherly love. Well, the only way that I know to do that that makes any sense, it's not going to be done with a sword. It's not going to be done in some type of military movement. It's going to be done by Christians uh, availing themselves of the opportunities they have to serve in these particular areas, but also availing themselves of the opportunity they have to share the gospel. We cannot do business like everybody else. We cannot be politicians that lie. We cannot be individuals that are, are, are sacrificing certain things for a greater purpose. We need to recognize that right is right, wrong is wrong, and we need to live that way. Daniel uh, is, a, is a great example of this. Daniel uh, was not exalted because he compromised so that everybody would, would think he was working within the system the way that he should. Daniel stood for what was right, and God exalted him. If God wants the government to be uh, 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 led by a Christian president, guess what? God is going to accomplish that. And we have to be people that are righteous and people of integrity so that we can see uh, that we're giving God the opportunity to have somebody to use in that particular area. So many of us, we want to we wanna be influential, but we're willing to do it by any means necessary. And that's not how God operates. God wants us to depend on him. He is the one uh, that exalts and he is the one that diminishes us as he sees fit. And we need to trust that if we do what he wants us to do, he's going to put us exactly where he wants us to be. Okay. God exalts those whom he wishes and he does not those whom he does not. 100%. And I think, you know, if you're asking yourself, man, this sounds complicated. This sounds like, you know, how, how do I 
uh, integrate myself into the political world, into the social world? How do I deal with these issues in a way um, that is going to be glorifying to God? The, the first thing that we have to understand is you have to set your loyalty first on Christ and on his church. And so, man, if like I said earlier, if you're if you see um, that you're you're sacrificing the means for the ends, if you're you know allowing yourself to do sinful things or think sinful thoughts in order to accomplish maybe a greater good, that is not the Bible. Never talks about morality. Never talks about Christ likeness in the sense of the greater good that you would sacrifice the means for the ends. And so, what is the first thing you need to do, practically speaking? prioritize your walk with Christ, prioritize the local church. If you're prioritizing your walk with Christ, that means you're evangelizing and discipling people. And if you're doing that and you're doing it in the local church, you're going to set yourself up to do exactly what God wants you to do in the Christian social order. If you are living for Christ at home, at work, at school, at church, everywhere you go, you're going to impact the social order the way that God wants you to. There's no 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 secret formula. There's no special bullet for turning the society into a Christian society. You need to be faithful in your walk with Christ. You need to do it connected to a local church. That is what God wants from you. And I mean, I think the world as a whole is impressed by what a man does. Uh, in other words, um, if you are if you are uh, good at a particular sport, man, you can be a, a, a terrible person, but as long as you're good at that sport, there will be people that respect you or people that appreciate you or people that cheer for you. We're impressed by what people do. Listen to me, God does not need you to do something. He needs you to be someone. He needs you to be someone who is holy and righteous and living for him. God is impressed not by what we do. God could do any of those things with or without us right? So God is not impressed by what we do as much as he is impressed by who we are. And so we should allow God to search our heart. And when people look at us, they should at least be able to say, if they find fault with us, just like when they found fault with Daniel, it ought to be because we love God and we're trying to do the things and be the person that he has called us to be. And in the midst of all these things, we trust him that he's going to he's gonna provide the increase and the opportunities as he sees fit and is best for his plan. Amen. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. I know this one was a little different because it, you know, it seems like maybe we had some nuances to add there, but uh, ultimately we want to be faithful to what we feel like scripture has uh, for us and what we feel like is the best way to approach this practically and theologically. And man, just go home today with this thought, live for Christ, prioritize the church, prioritize faithfulness to evangelism and discipleship. And man, you are going to impact the social order the way that God wants you to. See you guys later.